Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we need to do a few items on the 240Z so that we can take it out to start breaking in the engine. If you've been following this build at all, you know that this car just came back from Portland having the engine built. This engine's built for probably an excess of 500 horsepower, but right now it's tuned in at 350 horsepower and it's tuned quite a bit toward the richer side right now during break-in. So I need to get some miles on this thing to get it broken in before I really go back and tune the heck out of it. But in order to do that, I need to make it roadworthy. The biggest things holding me back from driving the car right now is the fact that there's a lot of things that are just free banging around in the interior. I need to put some sort of seatbelt system in the car and I need to just make sure everything's buttoned up so nothing falls off when I'm going down the road. These temporary wheels that I've thrown on the car that everyone seems to really like unfortunately are not sized to this car, so I need to play with moving them around and making sure they don't rub and scrape as I go down the road. The first item I'm going to tackle is getting some seats in the car. I have some Sparkos that need to go in the car, but ultimately I need to take out the old seats, pull the rails off of them, and swap them to these seats. Then I can go ahead and move on to the harnesses. So let's go ahead and start tackling the list and see how far we get. As you saw in the time lapse, I finally was able to get the seats installed. I took the old seats out, pulled their brackets off, which was quite an ordeal because there's no room to actually get a tool in above the sliders and get those nuts off of there. But once I finally was able to do that, all I had to do was remove and cut off the studs that were originally mounting them to the factory seats, drill a couple new holes to line up with the Sparkos, and go ahead and mount them to these seats. Now, the sliders do interfere slightly with the new hardware in the new locations to mount to the Sparkos, but they do move forward a few inches, and that does give me enough to play with for people who are just a little bit shorter leg than I am, and then ultimately gives me a little bit of a chance to do things like pull my harnesses tight and then slide my seat into them or give me a little more tightness there. Now that I've got the harnesses in and the harness bar in as well, I've got them adjusted to where I think I'll need them, but without actually spending some time driving and seeing how much fatter I get throughout the week, I don't know if this is exactly it, but I do have some adjustability. I ended up having to use the harnesses attached to the factory seatbelt locations, which isn't ideal because they actually turn out to be too far back to be able to grab the lower straps and adjust the waist strap effectively. So I have them adjusted as I need right now, but ultimately I may have to go drill some new holes and bring the mounts a little farther forward so that I can actually adjust those straps properly. But now that we have harnesses and this is quasi legal, let's go ahead and move on to the interior components and getting some lights working.
took me a few hours of fiddling, but I finally have the door cards in the car. So the Skiller door cards essentially are designed to go on with well nuts, which are little rubber fittings that push through the hole and collapse as you tighten them to hold the card in place. You see them a lot on motorcycles. In this application, the problem is this sheet needs to be bent to conform to the door and the well nuts are not necessarily the strongest things in the world for doing so. So you have to be very careful in what order you're tightening them up and how much you're tightening them. Additionally, the way the door bends the card to its contour as things are tightened down causes it to want to pull away in other areas. So you have to compromise. Ultimately, it would have been better if they shipped it with spacers behind the handle in order to keep this more straight and pre-bent the outer corner. But, I mean, there's only so much you can expect from an aftermarket part, and as far as aftermarket parts go, the finishing quality is really nice. I did go ahead and put some sticky sound deadening on the inside of this. As you can tell, that is a lot quieter than a sheet of aluminum would normally be, and that will help a lot with road noise. Now I am trying to keep this car very light, but it is not a race car. So I still want to not go insane from road noise and rattles. So now there's no more rattles in this door. It's nice and dense sounding, but still very light. I would bet this is still significantly lighter than the factory door card handle setup. So let's go ahead, get to the back hatch, get to some of the electrical. So as you saw, I got the rear end of the car sorted out, the brake lights and blinkers work. I don't have marker lights, but I don't need those for driving. My reverse lights don't work, but there's nothing hooked to the transmission, so they wouldn't do anything anyway. Um, I stuck the seal in for the hatch so that it's at least sealed and it's not rattling, but I didn't glue it in place because I want to clean up the edges some more, maybe add another layer of paint before I put all the glue in and actually glue it in place permanently. I did put on the little seal slash plaque panel on the back of the hatch that covers access to the key assembly and hatch release so that it will cut down on fumes, but also so that it doesn't sit on my shelf and get scratched up anymore. That's another part I picked up from Skiller that is a really nicely finished part and I really don't want it to get destroyed. So I put it on there, I put some sound deadening behind it and I also put the included foam seal in it so that it should cut down on any fumes being sucked through the hatch. Now that I have all this stuff sorted out, I figured I might as well do the steering wheel. And this is the Momo Prototipo steering wheel that I've had on my shelf forever for this car. And I finally got rid of all of the factory components up to the end of the shaft so that it moved the whole assembly of the quick connect and steering wheel toward the front of the car, which as you can see with my back in the seat, puts me at pretty much the perfect position for sitting in this car. And then the sliders allow me to adjust it for people who are a little shorter than I am. So this should be a really nice setup. Ultimately, I can already hear the difference of the echo and the just density sounding inside the car as I move around. So it should sound a lot better on the road. Now, I'm just going to see what other minor items I can work out, check to see if all my gauges are working or at least enough gauges that I feel pretty confident going down the road. And worst case, I may have Lauren just ride in the passenger seat with the laptop so I can see what the AEM is actually seeing as I drive. So let's see what else we can wrap up and get this thing fired up.
All right, I don't know how much people will actually be able to hear what I'm saying, but let's go ahead and get started. Tires are rubbing bad. We'll take a lower speed gravel road shortcut back. Unfortunately, it seems like there's quite a few things I still need to tinker with on this. So I'll be getting back to that now that I'm headed back to the shop. The tune is really rich. Either the tune is really rich or the O2 sensor is completely not right on this wideband because it says right now I'm running 12 and there's no way it should be running 12. Oil pressure, definitely good. My coolant temp is perfect. It gets up to about 160 degrees. The fan comes on, it never moves. So I have plenty of cooling. The car is obnoxiously loud. I have nothing covering the transmission tunnel so I can see the road. So that's pretty obnoxious. There also seems to be quite a lot of wine coming from the transmission. So I'm gonna check the coolant when I get, or the fluid when I get back, make sure that it's good. Double check the coolant just because it is good, but I wanna make sure I don't have any leaks. And then I'll double check my oil levels, but my oil pressure again is about perfect. Now that it's gotten warm, it's sitting right at 55 pounds at about 2,000 RPM. My tachometer decided to quit pretty much immediately, so I need to figure that one out. But other than that, the computer is still giving me my tach, and RPMs have been great. I haven't had any major, unless the RPMs get too low, I don't get major stumble, which is probably because of how rich it is. But all in all, I think it was a pretty successful test. I think this is where I will leave it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.